I lost my card, which is South African. I was using Capitec card. Mm -hmm. And I told him that without my card, I can't withdraw cash. I can only use my uh, uh, wallet, yeah. Apple wallet, to pay you. And every month he was complaining about that. Welcome to the Safe Space Chats podcast with Madam Speaker. My name is Perseverance Marimeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. If you're joining for the first time, welcome to the family of healing, self love and motivation. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continuous love and support you are showing to us. A big shout out to Virtuous Indoni Lodge, a big shout out to Crown Lioness, a big shout out to E2 Hair Studios, a big shout out to Hydro Quench, and a big shout out to Sand Studios. These are people, our people, our partners who are making these episodes to be possible. Now, without any further ado, we're going to go straight into our episode for today. I'm going to allow our guest to introduce herself and tell us why we are here. Hello, my darling. Hello. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here. You're happy to be here? Yes. I'm so glad you made it. All uh, the way from Pumalanga. From we thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very happy you welcome me. Please um, tell the people who you are and a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Vasetana. Vasetana mm -hmm. Huareng, um, Aswana girl, hailing all the way from Freiburg okay. in the northwest. And yeah, I moved to Witbank in 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I started working. And uh, I have a child. I'm a mom now. Mm -hmm. And I'm a part-time uh, content creator. Well, not a part-time, but full-time, like a TikToker and uh, YouTube here mm -hmm. and there sometimes, yes. How has that been like? Um, actually, before, it, I was just doing, like, fun slide stuff mm -hmm. and traveling with my son before the situation that we're here for happened. Mm -hmm. So I was just doing fun stuff, traveling and um, cooking videos, YouTube videos, I mean, makeup videos, and that was... How was the travel content like? How was the traveling uh, life like before you actually had this encounter that you had? It was actually really fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've always loved to travel, and mm -hmm. when I was in Europe, it was way cheaper for me to travel to other European countries like mm -hmm. Paris or... Uh, Netherlands, wherever, um, just learning about different cultures, uh, different people, and different food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what actually went wrong now this time around? Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, when I went there, I, I went in 2018. Okay. In, in June, I met a Croatian guy while I was working in Whitbank okay. in a restaurant. I was a waitress. Okay. And we met and we kind of fell in love. Okay. About like seven months later, I moved with him to Croatia okay. in Eastern Europe. Okay. And uh, we got married. I got pregnant. And f uh, right from the beginning, the, the, red, fly the, the red flags were there. Okay. Um, he was a gambling addict. Okay. His friends, because he was working here in South Africa in Whitbank. Uh, at a power station. His mm -hmm. friends, before we left, t already told me, don't go there. Mm -hmm. This guy has, uh, he has, he has just recently gotten divorced. Mm -hmm. and so don't go there. He's a gambling addict. You don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just thought they were jealous mm -hmm. of him and me, our relationship. I didn't listen to them. I, I left with him. Mm -hmm. And immediately when I got there, he started showing me who he was. So the uh, woman he that was, he was he married to, was it somebody from that side? Yes, he was. Okay. she was a Croatian lady, and they have a child together. Okay. And uh, when we got there, the abuse started. The physical abuse started, financial abuse started. And um, well, I still stayed, because uh, shortly afterwards, I got pregnant. Okay. And I didn't want to leave. Even then, my friends were telling me, you have to leave, because mm -hmm. look at what he's doing to you. And I was just thinking to myself, if I give birth... Maybe he's going will, to change, yeah. yes. Things will change. He's mm -hmm. going to see our baby, how beautiful our baby will be, and he's going to treat me better. Mm -hmm. and it got worse because during the pregnancy, him and his sisters attacked me physically, and they were taken to jail. I had to open a case against them. And I, him and his sisters? And his sister. Actually, one sister okay. and his brother-in-law. Okay. And then um, about two weeks later, I... Drop the, the charges mm -hmm. because again I kept thinking 
uh, when the baby's born, he's going to change. He's going to so change. So during the time when you were attacked, were you still pregnant? Yes. Sure. When, when his sister and him attacked yeah. me, I was pregnant. Sure. And then um, they, I, I dropped the charges because I wanted him to be there when I gave birth. Mm-hmm. On the day I gave birth, <laughs> he was in casino. Ha. Huh. Yes. Gambling his life away. Yes. He used the money that we were supposed to be uh, doing uh, our son's nursery mm-hmm. to gamble. Sure. And uh, because now the police had already known my situation and the social services had already known my situation. So uh, when I gave birth, they were there, the social services. Mm-hmm. And in my, I was so gullible. I thought they were there to help me. Okay. I, 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 they were asking me, like, are you okay? Are you safe for you and the baby to go back to this man? Mm-hmm. And I said, no, we are okay. I was so excited, even though the night before he was in casino. Mm-hmm. I was just excited to be holding my baby and mm. still in my head thinking, when he sees the baby, he's going to change. Mm. And then he came and uh, he changed for two weeks. He was the sweetest. Mm. And then after that, um, my baby got sick. He went to the hospital for one month because he had jaundice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know jaundice. Yeah. He, where his eyes are yellow. Uh, everything. And he was yeah, yellow body everywhere. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I had, had Christian and Zalo go for Um He started going back to casinos. He started hitting me again. And I had just given birth to C section. Sure. He started hitting me again, spitting on me again, throwing my stuff outside from the balcony. Mm. And then I decided, you know what? I have to, to, to get help. Mm. I went to the social services again, those people. Okay. <laughs> Um, before we get to the social services, what are the things that would actually provoke him to even lay a hand on you or do all these things that he would do to you? What are the like on a typical day where you're just sitting like this? What would be the thing that would make him want to attack you? The money, the problem, the money was the issue because he would be spending all the money. Also, when casinos. you complain about the money, when I used to complain about the money, or sometimes I would do people's hair there, okay. braid people's hair, mm-hmm. and then I would hide the money so that I could, you know, have transport, the money for transport to go and see Christian in hospital, mm-hmm. our son, Christian is our son. But he would take it instead and go and gamble. Mm-hmm. So we would be fighting about that. Okay. And then I went to them, I told them the situation, how bad it was, and I had no money, I wasn't working, I had just given birth. Mm. Uh, they said we we're going to, we're going to come and get you and your son. Mm. We're going to take you guys to a safe house, you know, like a women's shelter, yeah. which is where I was for like a three three weeks when I was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then um, two days later, they came and they said that we're here to take your son, only then, your son, only my son. And I asked them, what about me? Mm. Where am I going? And they told me that no, it's because you know. The space, we don't have space at the the, the dome. Mm. We'll come and get you next month. Sure. N- next month came. Oh, um, they, they sent me papers from court that I have to come and defend my case. Okay. That I I have uh, po- postpartum, mm-hmm. postpartum depression. Uh, depression, yeah. Yes, uh, that there's no food. My son, is, my, my husband and I are always fighting. And I asked them, but this is, you got this information from me. Yes. You didn't get it from my neighbors or friends. Mm. I went, I asked you for help. That's how you, that's how you got to know everything that mm. you know now, that you're now using against me. Mm. One month turned into nine months with my son away from me. How old was he when they took him? One month, two weeks. Ha. Huh. And then um, when they took him, he continued to beat me. The same day when they took him, he went to casino. Sure. They took, because I was crying, they took me to a psychiatric hospital. I slept with crazy people mm. only because I cried. I don't know what I was supposed to do when they just took my kid and I thought they were going to take me too. Mm. So that day, they took me to a psychiatric hospital, which gave him, my husband, the time to go to casino mm. and finish all the money that we had. Sure. In the, uh, um, afterwards, we, I came home and um, he continued to beat me. Mm. I told, because you know, they sent somebody home to, to to your house to check if everything is okay, mm-hmm. if the child could come back. So they have that s- social worker to come and check. Mm-hmm. Then he, my husband would beat me. And then afterwards, he would call the social worker and tell her that Basi is trying to call the police. 
come and help. Mm. And then when she comes, I would tell her that he just beat me. He was in casino and he just beat me. And now I'm going to call the police because he hit me. Mm. And the social worker would tell me that if you call the police, they're not, we, we are not going to give you a child back mm. because it would show us that you guys are not ready. But you guys knew that I'm in an abusive relationship and you left me here mm. to, to die, to suffer. Mm. Now every time I try to get myself out of here, you t- you're threatening me with not giving me my child back. Mm. So it went like that for nine months until I got my son back. So during this time when they, they kept your son, were you able to visit him? I was visiting him for one one hour, 30 minutes every day. He spent his fi- first birth, uh, Christmas in that homeless shelter. Sure. Every, one, uh, every day, one hour, 30 minutes with him. Mm. Yes. And you would still make it? Every single day. Sure. There was a time when he even went home to his mother's house mm-hmm. where he was he went on a gambling spree for five days. Mm. And um, I had to pretend like everything at home was okay because remember, we have to put on a front, mm. like a, a good, like this perfect image so that we could get our child back. Mm. And the person that had to endure all the it's abuse you. was me. And they knew that I was enduring it because mm. I was talking to a social worker and I was telling her, I'm being abused. Please get me out of here. Mm. And she would basically tell me that you have to keep quiet. If, if you talk, then you're not going to get your child back. And there was a time when he went to casino, and when he came, we had a pro- We thought about the money. Mm. He broke my phone, he beat me. Mm. And then she, he called her again. It was around 12 a.m., mm. midnight. And she came, as I was crying, she was praying for me, saying that I have demons, and she's praying, she's not trying to take the demons out of me, and... The, my mother-in-law was there, she, who doesn't like me also. Mm. So she was like, yeah, yeah, pray for her. I told, I told everyone that she's demonic. Mm. Um, and that time, I also I had no phone, so I had nobody to call. The only person that knew about what was, what was going on at that time was my friend. Mm. I didn't really tell anyone at home. So everybody back here in South Africa didn't know what was going on with you? They didn't know Christian was taken. Actually, my father knew, but he knew at a later st- stage when Christian was about to come. All that time, no one knew. They d- you didn't even tell them about the abuse and the, and no. the gambling and all no, that stuff? No, I, I, I didn't tell them. It was like I was just ashamed of people laughing at me, you know. Mm. Abantu Basotin syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And uh, after that, my son came and we decided to come back to South Africa. Yeah. When my son came, and I told myself, I promised myself, okay, when Christian comes, I'm going to come back home mm-hmm. to South Africa. Mm-hmm. And I want nothing to do with this country. I saw what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I came back to South Africa with Christian. <laughs> Three months later, the girl of me believed him again when he told me that I've changed and everything is going to be okay. I want you, I want us to be a family. Please come back. And I went back. Okay, so... When you came back with, with your son for the first time, how long had it been since you'd been away from home? I, it was, I came in 2020, and the last time I was home was in 2018. Sure. Yes. Okay. So, and then when you were at home, how was it like? That time, my heart was still not sure mm-hmm. of whether I want to leave him or not. Like, I thought of, like, my son deserves mom and the dad yeah. in the same roof. Um, I grew up in Freiburg where I didn't have my mother. My mother died when I was in grade two. Mm-hmm. And my father and I, we only met when I was 18. Mm-hmm. And I wanted my son, I wanted to do everything I could in my power to give my son the childhood that I didn't have. Sure. And I think that's where a lot of us actually hold on to situations that are not good for us because mm-hmm. we're literally just trying for our kids to have what we didn't have. And it doesn't always work. But also with other people, they always say because they had those good child childhoods, they want their kids to have what they have. So it's not only those that didn't have parents that yes. want their kids to have that. I think in general, we just all want that. Yes. It's just too bad that we have to go through stuff sometimes and we have to do it with the wrong people. Yeah. And we don't realize that we actually sometimes, in most cases, we hurt kids. We think yeah. we're doing them a favor. But yeah. We hurt them. Yeah. So during the time when you were back home for the three months that you were saying you were here, did you not tell anybody about what you faced when you were that side? That time my dad knew. Mm -hmm. He knew and I think my aunt also knew. Mm -hmm. But my maternal family, they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. They didn't know. Because remember, my maternal family is a family where I grew up Mm -hmm. in Freiburg, so 
they didn't know. Yeah. I didn't want them to. I still had that Abantubazotini syndrome. Yeah. And then after that three months, we went back, and one month later, he started again. Mm. The, the abuse started again. So during the month that you, you went back, for, just for that one month, how was it like? He was like buying a f- new furniture. We moved into a different apartment. And he, he knew that I like a beautiful apartment more than anything. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather wear like nothing, like a trash bag, mm-hmm. but have beautiful bedroom yeah <laughs> so he knew that's what i liked and he got us a new apartment it was two bedroom and i was so happy like okay he's mm. actually really trying mm. and then after a month he went back to casino sure and he left he, that the first time he left uh he went to casino he we didn't have food in the house mm-hmm. we had uh, the fridge was empty mm. and uh, Christian that time was, I think he was one month, one year and five months, something like that. Mm-hmm. And he, when we knew that he was going to come at 5, yeah. 5 p.m., so I just ironed Christian's best clothes and, and my clothes. Uh, we were going to buy groceries. Mm-hmm. We were then probably going to have something at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, yo, it's 5 came mm-hmm. until 12. Ha. Huh. I don't know if I should say this here, mm-hmm. but I had to leave my kid in the house just to go and try to check where he was in casinos mm-hmm. so that he doesn't finish the little that he had left. Mm-hmm. He was but sleeping. Christian was sleeping mm-hmm. at night. Yeah. Yes, I had to leave mm-hmm. and go and try to check him in casinos just to save the little that he had because without that money, we had nothing. Mm-hmm. We, had, I, we depended on one salary, which was his. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, he was getting like... 2,500 euros. I don't know how much that is in South Africa. I don't know. Probably around 30-something K, Mm -hmm. and he wasted it in those hours. Um, And he came, he slept me again when he got home. Mm. We actually met halfway. Remember, I was going to check him. We Mm -hmm. met halfway. And then when we came, he beat me. Mm. That's when I knew that I shouldn't have came back here. Yes. Sure. Um. So after you, you then realized that it was a bad, bad move for you to actually come back there. What, what is the next move that you do then? I started braiding people again. I was like now braiding people a lot with Christian there. Um, and then I was sailing to go back home again. Mm-hmm. A few months after that, we came back to South Africa mm-hmm. and then we stayed uh, so during the time, sorry, during the time when you were busy braiding people and saving, was he aware of your, your intentions or he just thought that he was just going to endu- continue enduring all, all his abuse? He was aware that I was going to come back. I, mm-hmm. I told him. The thing is, with him, I couldn't, a lot of people told me that you should just pretend to be dumb, don't, but I could not do it. I, I was very upfront with how I felt because mm-hmm. I thought that he was going to somehow feel bad for me. Mm-hmm and uh, do better but he didn't so um he knew i prayed at people and i saved enough money and Kristen and i came back home mm. uh we stayed in south africa for i think eight eight months mm-hmm. while we were staying here i started going back to the same job that i worked in when we met okay. i got Kristen and nanny uh, eventually that place where i was working became just too toxic mm. for me and I decided to just leave the job. And then he talked to me. He said, you know, we could, you could come to Germany. Everything will be different. And um, I will be a better person. He apologized again. Mm. At that time, I didn't believe that he was telling the truth. Mm. I knew that he was lying. But I thought that because it's a different country, I would. It, it's a, Germany is big. So I mm. thought if I go there... Um, I would just stay with him for like a few months and then start your own and start my own and maybe ask help from the government or like mm-hmm. you know this NGOs mm-hmm. for me and Christian to move in like mm-hmm. to a different place. So Christian and I went back, mm-hmm. and um, when we got there, we stayed and unfortunately I didn't go. I tried to ask for help from NGOs, but mm-hmm. I didn't get any help. And I stayed with him. And the abuse continued. Mm. It continued. It's like you just pick up where you left off. Yes, I was picking. It, it actually 
got worse. It kept getting worse. The more I go back, the more it got worse. Mm. Yes. And then um, we had to go back to Croatia because his contract in Germany was finished. Mm -hmm. And we had to go back to Croatia. Um, that, <laughs> it hurt me because I knew that I was going back to a place that almost broke me, that almost mm -hmm. destroyed me. And but we went. Um, when we got there, we stayed in a very nice place mm -hmm. that I liked. And we stayed there for, I think, six months. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, the money just went to casino so much that he couldn't pay anymore. Mm. For the place to stay? For for our place. Mm. He was behind in uh, current. Mm. And he told me only like uh, three months later mm. that, that he was, been that uh, I've been, I've, we've been behind current there for three months. Mm. That's when I decided, okay, this is going on and... Now I had my own money. I was making some money on TikTok. I was also braiding people. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to move out of here. Mm -hmm. Then I packed my stuff. I packed Christian stuff. Then I left. We, actually, I looked for a place. When I was looking for a place, I didn't tell him that I was looking for a place. Mm -hmm. We took our stuff, and then we moved out. Me and Christian moved to the best place. Okay. When we got there, I was so happy. I was so proud of myself that... I finally managed to get me and my son out of that, that situation, five years of horror. Mm. And I felt free. Mm. I felt very proud of myself. When we got there, at first it was okay. Uh, the apartment was fairly new, so it had like the toilets, the toilet was leaking from down, mm -hmm. the showers were leaking sometimes. Our Wi-Fi wasn't working. Sometimes our electricity wasn't working. Uh, but I I talked to the guy, the landlord, mm -hmm. to to help us. Then at first he agreed that, okay, he would come and fix the showers, everything. Mm -hmm. But gradually, it, the problems kept going on and on and on and on. Okay. And then he stopped. Maintaining the he, place. He stopped maintaining the place. Mm -hmm. And how long had you guys been staying uh, in that in that place? We were staying there for four months, from March until Ju uh, until the incident, August. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so then, so uh, I then he also had a problem with um, me paying him in cash, okay. in in ca with card. I'm sorry, with card. Okay. I was paying him with card, and he what he did not want that. Mm -hmm. He said. Um, you have to pay me with, with cash. I don't know why, but he just wanted that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually my card, I lost my card, which is South African. I was using Capitec card. Mm -hmm. And I told him that without my card, I can't withdraw cash. I can only use my uh, uh, wallet, yeah. Apple wallet, to pay you. And every month he was complaining about that. So in July, I came home okay. to come and fix the card so that I can pay him. In cash, as so he wanted. Wait, wait, during this time, um, your husband is not reaching out or anything like that? No, he was now living with his mom. But you guys were still married? Yes, legally we were still married. Okay, and then now with the card? You can and then I got the card, I went back and I gave him his July rent with cash. I paid him cash. And... Then the problems, again, continued, especially with the shower. I couldn't shower now. We couldn't shower anymore. I had to shower in a basin. Mm -hmm. And I told him that, listen, we, we have these problems now. Mm -hmm. So can you please? It would be, and I've been complaining about this for some time. Can you please do something about it? That's when he now at this point said that I did it on purpose. Hmm? Yes. He said I leaked the water on purpose. Who, you or him? He, I did. I leaked the water on purpose said, but I've been complaining about the same thing for an, over and over and over again. Mm. Why is it now that I'm doing it on purpose? Mm. And he said, you know what? We are cancelling the contract. Mm. I'm cancelling our contract. Mm. Um, I was actually happy that he was cancelling it because I was living in... It was a nightmare. Mm. So if I cancelled it myself, I would have had to 
uh, risk losing my deposit. Mm -hmm. So he he so yeah he cancelled it and I was okay with it. The following week, the leak got worse. The shower leak got worse. Mm. Then I told him, and he said, "Give me two minutes." Uh, no, he said, "I think ten minutes." Mm. That and dried uh, the 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 bathroom. I'm coming. As he was, as I was busy trying to dry the the, the bathroom, he came with his youngest son. Mm -hmm. When he came, he opened my bathroom, no, my bedroom. Mm. So now I'm like, I'm shocked. I, then I try to start taking video, like, okay, why are you coming into the bathroom? Mm. I know it's your apartment, but I'm You're renting. I'm rent. Yes, my staff is there, and I'm renting, and my son is here. Mm. And then he's just started taking out my stuff, um, taking out the, our bags, taking out Christian stuff. My God, I was, that time I was scared. Mm. I was scared and I was still, con I was confused. Mm. So I just decided to, to take uh, videos of what was happening because I feel like if I didn't and I told people this is what happened to me, they, they would have said I was lying. Mm. And then um, he took the keys then he switched off uh, the air conditioner that time it was so hot in the house in Croatia mm -hmm. it was very hot he switched off everything internet also so that I don't call anyone um, then I tried to go outside to get my son food mm -hmm. the deli from, from a delivery man because he had been there for so long and my son was hungry I couldn't cook electricity was off um, then when I tried to get the food, that's when he started to fight me. Like, you can't just get out without him. You have to take him with you and your stuff. Okay. Then you, you and, and like he tripped me. Mm. That time I'm live on TikTok as sure. it happened. Yeah. And when I got up, I really tried to defend myself. Mm. I tried with my or oh, to defend myself, and then uh, he called the police. The police came. When they got there, they told me Hore, I should leave his house. In, yeah, they instantly told me that I should respect Croatian laws. I said, I asked them, but I paid. Mm -hmm. And I just even recently went home, spent money, a lot of money on flights, just to give him, to give this man what he wanted. Mm -hmm. What about my money then? Mm. And where do we go in such short notice? Like, mm. what about the, the fact that I signed a contract with him? Mm. They said, oh, you worried about the contract? Well, you should write something down for her, for her since she's worried about the contract. Mm. And then I got something in Croatian. And he was like, here, sign. It was in Croatian. I was like, no, I'm not going to sign something that I don't understand. Mm. Um, and then, we will handcuff you. For what? Because you don't want to follow the Croatian laws. Mm. But how can I re sign something that I don't understand? Mm. Then they went outside Liana and they had a talk for like 20 minutes. Mm. Then they left me and Christine in the house. Um, about two days later, after that attack, I decided... You know, I don't feel safe because after that attack, they were coming at night. Then they were making noise outside. Who was coming here? The this landlord. Guy, the landlord, mm. he would make noise, like, intentionally gone there, mm. just so that I could hear them. Then I went to the embassy two days later. Mm. Um, when I got to the embassy, I cried, you know. Mm. I, I cried for help, please. Sure. Because, oh, I forgot to tell you that, remember what that seven months that Christian and I stayed in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He actually, we ended up here. I wanted to do his papers, mm -hmm. but his father was needed to be a part sure. of this. Yeah. He refused to, to sign the papers yeah. for, so that Christian had really a dual citizenship in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So because of that, Christian had overstayed mm -hmm. visa. Yeah. This side. This side, mm -hmm. yes. So Christian had overstayed his visa. Mm -hmm. That's why we went to the embassy and asked them to uh, to leave the band because I didn't feel safe in Croatia anymore. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come back home and I didn't want to leave my son behind. Um, 
Bambota, no, it's not up to us. We have to go to consult with the Home Affairs. Mm. It's not up to us. We have to consult with them. And um, they gave me some papers to fill in in case the Home Affairs agrees. Here's the papers. You just go there for now and um, make sure that you fill these papers. Mm. We can't help you with accommodation. That's not what the embassy does. Mm. So we can't help you, mm. basically. When I got back from the embassy, I <laughs> I got the shock of my life. Mm. And it was like a seven-hour f- tr- uh, bus bus trip from Budapest to Croatia. Sure. When we got to, cre- to, to our doorstep, my son wanted to pee so bad. Mm. He wanted to go to the loo so bad. He wanted water. When we got there, the, doors, the door was locked. They had changed the locks. And we had only what we were wearing at that time on. And your stuff was inside? And then I peeped through the window, my bedroom window. Mm. Everything was gone. The closet was empty. The blankets, every single thing was gone. And, uh, you know, because I have history with Croatian law, Croatian police, right there I just knew that he would get away with it. But I had to do what I had to do at the time. And um, I wait. I sat there. I called Christian's dad. Um, he acted shocked, mm. gutted. And I'll tell you why I said he acted, acted. later. Yeah. Um, then I called his friend who, he, who came and um, tried to figure out what was going on. And we couldn't figure out. I, uh, I asked the, bo- the, sa- the son of the landlord came. Mm. And I asked him what happened to my clothes. He said he doesn't know what happened to my clothes. Then I went to the police. Um, when they, I, I got there, I got the, uh, the worst attitude mm. from them. But can I, I lost my own everything. Mm. Uh, can I please open a case? But who took your stuff? I said, the landlord took my stuff. How do you know? You don't have proof. Mm. So who would take all my stuff and out change and change the locks? No, but you could be using a duplica, a replica key. Mm-hmm. So it, it could be that nobody changed the locks. You mm-hmm. are using a replica key. But why? But they said that he, the land, they called the landlord. The landlord told, no. Actually, my husband, Kristen's father, called the landlord. And the landlord t- told him that, she left. She went back to South Africa and she gave me my keys back. That's why there's nothing there. And that's what I told the police. And the police said, maybe you did really leave. Maybe now you just changed your, your mind and came back. Mm. But I said, how, is that, like- how is that possible? Why would I leave with just a bag? Mm. Uh, they had no answers for that. And they were, I had to beg them, by the way. To write down my statement, they didn't want to. Mm. Please, I said, I knew, I know you're not gonna do anything about it, but I just want want this to be on record mm. that I did open a case. Um, then when I was done, uh, Christian and I went to a hostel. Sure. They didn't even say, okay, let's go and ask the landlord. Mm. Let's go f- try to get your stuff because, you know, your son has nothing to change. You have nothing to change. Mm. You have nothing. Then I went to a hostel the following day. I decided to go there myself mm-hmm. to get our stuff because we had everything that belonged to us taken from us, mm. including my money that was in the apartment, sure. my equipment, mm. everything was in there. And then when we got there, I called him. I told him that I'm here. He came, opened the door. Christian was playing with um, a, a, my phone. Mm-hmm. He took it from Christian. That's when I knew that these people are about to attack me. He took, took the, the, he the took landlord. The landlord and his sons. He came with his two sons. He took his, uh, the phone from Christian. And he took the, my phone. My other phone. Mm. And that man started beating me. He started doing it. And then his sons were also doing it. Like as I was trying. When, when they saw that I was trying to you know, defend myself from him. Then they would also get involved and one would hold me Ganging up on, you on my yeah one would hold me 
go out, go out, like Momaro, mm-hmm. while the other two were hitting me. Mm-hmm. And remember that time, Christian had a phone, mm-hmm. so he had to watch. Sure. Everything. Trauma. Yes. He had to watch every single thing. Mm. And he kept saying, please stop, 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 stop. They wouldn't stop. In the cabaret, I was wearing this Moses Oluwa. Yeah. Yeah. Went down, bang mm. shaba, while I was naked. Sure. And then they threw me out. I saw them throw Christian out. Sure. And Gary, he was nothing. Mm. And then God, I sat down where I was doing the video, sitting down. When I was sitting down, actually, the na- actually I didn't just sit down first. I went outside after my father's home, mm-hmm. screamed for help. One neighbor came, but he was living far. He wasn't, like, even close. Mm-hmm. Um, he came and asked what's going on, and he got inside. They were talking in their language. And mm-hmm. So you you didn't know the language? You I know just a, a little things. bit, okay, yeah. yeah. And... Then they got out. I think he was lying to them, saying what I do in the shower, which was very f- false. Mm-hmm. I actually asked him to come and fix the shower, yeah. which had been problematic for months. Mm. So um, they, this guy, <sighs> please ask him to give me my phones back. Mm. He had to beg him. Like he, I heard him say, you just attacked a woman with your sons yeah. in front of her child. Mm. Please give her for her stuff, mm. and then that's when he gave me my phones back. That's when I was able to start mm. recording because I just knew that the police are not gonna come mm. and they're not gonna do anything. I want this to be seen, like mm. what happened to me. Mm. And then my um, they could see how I was beaten. They could see in my face and my, like on my arm how I was beaten. And they ad- admitted that, yeah, we can see that they did beat you, mm-hmm. but we don't know who beat you. Do you know who beat you? They mm-hmm. asked me that. Do you know who beat you? I said, it's these three, three men. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, but you don't have proof. Do you have witnesses? You don't have witnesses. I was like, how do you even know that I don't have witnesses? Mm-hmm. They said, but you do you? I said, it's them and my son. Mm-hmm. And my son told them, the, the police, that they hit my mom. They said we can't. The law, our law, can't take what a five-year-old is saying mm. seriously. And then after more, the, one of them asked for my ID. Mm. And Kamufayo and I, because I thought it was a, a regular routine, Mapunisa. Uh, you know when you just to check, just yes. to check the details. No, it wasn't that. Mm. He took it and he refused to give me back, and he never gave it to me. The the embassy I called the embassy, mm. begging them for bam bam am for ID back, and he refused. What is his reason? He wasn't talking. I took a video of him asking him to give me my ID. He just he, he even refused to give me to give us his name. Mm. Yes. Sure. And um, then uh, his the wife came. You know when the wife came, I. The things that she said. That time, she was, she was like saying that you should be ashamed. You're accusing my husband of hitting you. He's never beaten anyone in his life. Hmm. And I'm like, I, I'm so confused. Like, I should be ashamed. You just kicked me out of a house that I rented hmm. with my five-year-old child. And your, your, your son, your sons and your husband just attacked me. And you can, t- she could tell when she was looking at me that I, I she knew I had just been attacked. Mm-hmm. And you're saying, you're telling me that I should be ashamed? Sure. An entire woman. Yes. And, you know, there, there were also neighbors now, like, mm-hmm. surrounding me. Not even one of them came and gave Christian water. Not even one of them said, check them, Christian, are you okay? I saw my son and I was sitting there crying. Mm-hmm giving that man who just attacked me a bomb because he didn't know what just... He didn't understand what was going on. He was just playing around. Yeah. yeah. All of these things must be happening to you in a foreign land. Yes. So I feel like even the fear of just thinking these people could really just kill me and get uh, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought, you know, if I don't post, because um, if I don't go live, because at first I did go live. Mm-hmm. And I, the reason why I went live instead of 
taking a video was because I wanted to instant p- for people to instantly okay. see the situation that I was in in case they were going to just say, oh no, she just said she's going to South Africa with her son. Mm. The police would help collaborate, collaborate their story. Yeah. So I, that's why I went live and I told people that this is what's going to me right now. This is, this is my situation right now in this moment. Yeah. If in case anyone, like in case I kiss up with I, I want everyone to know this is what happened to me. Yo, Vazalan, we're going to come back with part two so that we just wrap up this story because we're obviously we're going to be having a few questions to ask and also to know what happens after all of that, you know, her being attacked and everything. Obviously, we're going to put the videos of what actually happened to her because we all saw that on TikTok. And just to see, Hori, from all of that to her eventually coming home and being able to be the testimony that she is sitting here speaking to us today, how did we get here? So please stay tuned for part two, which is going to come straight after this one.